Okay, so hello everyone. I'm Rafael from Nobugs Project, and today we're going to have a special challenge about invocation handler. So it's basically an interceptor, and, and I'm going to show you now. I'm going to just share my screen. Yeah, so this is a challenge. Uh, we have a proxied variable, and we are also implementing this interface, invocation handler, which makes uh, which enables us to intercept a method. We are using this new proxy instance with this class proxy and invoking it. And then we are invoking some methods here below. So I'm gonna give you some time to analyze this code more carefully and then you can come up with the answer. Okay, guys, are you ready to see the answer? yeah yes okay let's see okay oh yes congratulations <laughs> congratulations ronaldo <laughs> you got it right <laughs> great guess great guess okay let's okay. see why now so the first thing to realize here is that we are implementing the invocation handler interface which uh, makes us able to intercept a method yeah, we are declaring this proxy list and we are passing this uh, this list here. So this is a reflection method that uh, can give us this ability of intercepting a method. So we pass the class loader interfaces and the invocation handler that would be the our own instance. So after we do that, we return a proxy, which makes us uh, able to intercept any method from this proxy. So this is very useful, for example, to creating logs or to make some special treatment with exceptions. So this is basically what's used for AOP programming. We are able to intercept any method invocation. So here we add Barney. And in the moment that we invoke this method, the interceptor will be invoked. So I'm going to show you debugging here just to make it more clear. So when we invoke the add method, you see that the debug is already there. So our method name doesn't start with remove, so nothing will happen. And here actually, so what is this char 99 and char 101? So basically they are called in the ask table. So 99 represents the letter C and here, the value is E. So it's possible to convert a number if we are using a char to a character and then convert it to string. So basically we are asking here if the method starts with uh, either C or E, which doesn't happen here, right? So the method is gonna be invoked normally. So let's go to the next one to be the same. To be the same. And the remove method is a bit different. So as the method re uh, starts with remove, it will be returned false. And the same here. And when we use the contains method, so it will be blocked because as this method starts with C, it will fall into this condition. So the method get a name, it starts with C. So we're gonna return false. So even still this method should return true because this proxy contains Homer, 
it's returning false because of the interceptor that is returning false and on which that uh, makes the method not to be invoked. And here on the equals method, it will happen the same. So as this method starts with E, it will return false. Then the output. Therefore, the output will be Barney, Homer, Mo, false and false. And that's it, guys, for this challenge. You have any questions? No. no I know that it's such a difficult uh, challenge, for sure. <laughs> no, uh, uh, I mean, I know that the 99 and 101 are from the, are the position in, in the ask table but is is there like a, an easy way to remember that or it, it was just you know a tricky part of the challenge so there's no easy way to remember okay. that you have to check on the ask table okay because i i just i just took a guess because it, it would be the the letters that would make sense in this challenge because you know c and e are, are you know two positions apart and it's 99 and 101 so th that was my guess but i i i didn't remember the position on the ask table of course okay so it was a good guess because you just measured how many letters were after c yeah yeah okay yeah, that that was, for example, a way to figure this out. Yeah, I actually mi missed on the on the remove part. I thought uh, the remove part will will return true, but I totally forgot. I I think I did not see this this if statement in the invoke method, which basically returns false when the method name starts with remove. So it would not remove anything. It would, it would not remove Homer, nor it would remove more. Yes, I was catched by this trick, yes. <laughs> yeah, so the main thing to remember about this challenge is that it's possible to intercept methods with this interface because it's necessary on our systems, on in our projects. So we have this example here, and now we know exactly how to do it if necessary. And that's it. Uh, do you have any other any further questions? No, I'm good. Okay, no question. I'm good. Okay, then, guys. So uh, I'll just stop sharing my screen. And that was the example of intercepting a method. And this will be really useful in your project because sometimes you just need to intercept methods and just uh, block something, or you have to do some special treatment in your code. And this invocation handler interface is vastly used in frameworks as well, like uh, in Spring or uh, the Java E platform or Jakarta. So it's, it's very useful to know how those reflections concepts work. And that's it, guys. I uh, hope you got value from that. And if you want to get more knowledge about it, you can go to nobugsproject.com. And there is a section there called Java Dev Gym. And then you can take some challenges. You can improve your Java skills. And if you like the video, just give a like and uh, subscribe to the channel because it will help me out to create more challenges. And yeah, see you next week. And uh, there will be more challenges every week. So stay tuned. See you.